The Caribbean is home to several official UNESCO World Heritage Sites scattered across 11 Caribbean countries. The beauty and history of the Caribbean are not limited to just the current historical sites. Some Caribbean countries believe that there are lots more to be seen and protected of our land and rightfully so. The world needs to see and learn about the history of the Caribbean and these historical sites in a limited way is showing how we got here and where we are heading. Submissions of these have been made by the government of various countries of cultural, historic and natural areas to be considered for the title of World Heritage Site. In this presentation, we will take a peek at some of these tentative UNESCO World Heritage Sites throughout the Caribbean. Please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for our future videos. Number 1. The Industrial Heritage of Barbados – The Story of Sugar and Rum as the name depicts, the story of sugar and rum is a reflection of the island's history of sugarcane production, slavery, and rum in the 17th century. Barbados was one of the first Caribbean countries to develop a successful sugar industry under British rule. The country is home to the world's oldest rum distillery in the world, Mount Gay. This distillery has been functional since the 1700s and adds to the story of how important sugar and rum have been to the people of Barbados. Though back then, the captive slaves did all the work. The rich history remains a successful agricultural industry. Number 2. Cuba National Schools of Art The National Schools of Art were created in 1962 to serve as a training schools for aspiring artists. Artists have the opportunity to be trained in five specialties – music, drama, ballet, modern and folkloric dancing, as well as plastic arts. The structure of the buildings shows expert workmanship using contemporary Cuban culture. Graduates of this art school have been among the most renowned artists in Latin America and internationally. Number 3. Dominica Morn Diablatin National Park the Morn Diablatin National Park is a nature reserve and was declared the island's third national park in 2000. The park consists of forested areas and is home to two very special parrots. The Cicero or Imperial Parrot, which is Dominica's national bird, and the Jacko Red-necked Parrot are both endemic to Dominica and are endangered. The Morn Park provides a protected habitat for them to thrive and hopefully multiply. In 1993, a syndicate nature trail was added to the area to offer visitors the opportunity to view the Cicero and Jacko parrots, as well as other bird species like the blue-headed hummingbird and the plumius warbler, which are only found in Guadeloupe, Dominica and Martinique. Number 4. Jamaica Underwater City of Port Royal Port Royal was founded in the 15th century by the Spanish and was known as the wickedest and largest city in the Caribbean. Its fame and fortune came as a result of its shipboard, pirate activity and looting. However, in 1692, the city was struck by a 7.5 magnitude earthquake which sunk around two-thirds of the city underwater in a matter of minutes. The remains can be found by taking a 40-foot dive underwater. Today, Port Royal is a small fishing village, but the history is still very potent. Just shortly after being built, the city disappeared into the sea, but it is perfectly preserved as it was on that day in 1692. Number 5. St. Kitts and Nevis Historic Zone of Basseterre Founded around 1625, the town of Basseterre is located in a very fertile plain and is known as the first French town in the Caribbean. This French influence can be seen in the building architecture as French styles are dominant. In some areas, both French and British influence can be seen, giving credit to the colonial powers that once ruled. Today, Basseterre is the capital of St. Kitts and Nevis and runs as its main commercial center, with two shipping ports and an airport a short distance away. Number 6. The Bahamas, the Inagua National Park the Inagua National Park was established in 1965 and is located on the island of Great Inagua, Bahamas. The park features a permanent lake, Lake Rosa, a saline lagoon, a section of dense mangroves, 
and even some small scattered islands. The Nagua Park plays an important role in the breeding and passage of various species of water birds. Above all, it is a protected breeding ground for the West Indian flamingos. It provides a home to over 40,000 Caribbean flamingos, which so happen to be the national bird of the Bahamas. The area is also a haven for several species of reptiles and birds that are either endangered, rare, or endemic. Number 7. Grenada, the Grenadines The Grenadines are a group of 35 small islands located between Grenada and St. Vincent in the Lesser Antilles of the Caribbean. They form what is known as the Grenadine Shelf with a cover distance of 55 miles, ranging from the island of London Bridge in the south to Bequia in the north. The Grenadine Shelf is approximately 164 feet deep and plunges into the nearby Tobago Trough. The geographical location of this area is significant as it lies along the border of the Caribbean and South American tectonic plates. Due to this, several submarine volcanoes can be found in the area. Kikum Jenny, the only live underwater volcano that can be found in the area and has erupted as recently as 2017. This goes to show how many islands of the Eastern Caribbean were created, many underwater volcanoes erupted, and the deposits accumulated over time to create islands. The Grenadines extend across the international boundary between Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, resulting in strong links among the islands. Trading, fishing, and tourism are some of the most popular connections across the islands with the Grenadines. Number 8. Guyana Fort Zeelandia, including Court of Policy Building Fort Zeelandia and its neighbors, the Court of Policy Building, were constructed in 1743 by enslaved Africans. At the time, the construction of Fort Zeelandia was funded by the Dutch West India Company, who found it pertinent to defend themselves from other Europeans and Amerindian raiders. The fort is relatively small, with two stories, and has a brick and mortar structure. The Court of Policy building, though made in the same year, wears the hat of the oldest building in Guyana. It was made out of clay and consisted of three sections or rooms. A church is located centrally, with the Court of Policy in the north and a section that was used to auction slaves is situated in the south. Number 9. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Rock Art of St. Vincent and the Grenadines The Rock Art of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a form of petroglyphs in which the ancient people carved art or engravings into rocks, especially andesite. Across the country, over 18 rock art sites have been recorded with locations mainly in river valleys near the coast. Remarkably, the rock arts found in St. Vincent and the Grenadines share features with mainland South American rock art and the usual Antillian styles. This can be an indication of travel and ancestry from the mainland to the small islands. The art displays show carvings of headfoot people, double ears, faces together, patterns and elements of dress and body decoration. Some of these are features that are not present in South American rock art which could indicate that while the ancestors of the ancient people traveled from the south, their art and language diversified upon arrival in the Caribbean. A unique rock art site is Buckament, which has engravings in a script-like linear pattern, including spirals, circles, dots, and loops. This has been proposed by scientists to be a possible prototype for a written language of ancient years. Before we get to the 10th tentative UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Caribbean, we would greatly appreciate it if you would give this video a like. Please click the like button below. Thank you! In the description below are links to some of these amazing sites if you need additional information. Number 10. Trinidad and Tobago La Bria Pitch Lake La Bria Pitch Lake is the largest natural deposit of asphalt in the world. Located in southwest Trinidad, the lake spans approximately 100 acres and is estimated to be around 200 feet deep in the center. It has been estimated that Pitch Lake holds about 10 million tons of asphalt, which is also called pitch. Trinidad and Tobago is the Caribbean's largest producer of crude oil and gas. This fossil fuel can be broken down into different products, one such being asphalt. 
The asphalt present in the lake has leached from underground and is an emulsion of water, gas, bitumen, and mineral matter. Some areas of the lake have an influx of gas, usually methane, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. These materials harden over time and form a layer of asphalt, which triggers fresh materials to break through in another section, repeating the cycle. Although mostly stagnant, areas of the lake can be seen to display a stirring motion, and reports have been made that items have appeared, disappeared, then reappeared in the lake. All this and the water content of the lake is dependent on the time of year. The history, beauty, uniqueness, and preservation of these sites are some proposed reasons for their addition to the UNESCO World Heritage List. It is important for us all to preserve history for our future generations yet to come. Check out our links below for additional information on these historical sites. Please like, subscribe, share our channel with others, and turn on the notification bell for our next video as we explore rich Caribbean heritage and cultures together. This is Gyre Caribbean. See you next time.